Welcome to the College of Arts and Sciences, your academic home at UMass Dartmouth. You may or may not have declared a major by now, but we'd like you to know that we have both a vision and a course of general study for you that together will connect you to your major and round out your studies here so that you can understand the bigger picture and be involved in the world around you. The vision of the college is to prepare you for a productive and rewarding career, for independence and self-responsibility, for responsible citizenship in a democratic society, and for a lifelong learning beyond your years here. How do we achieve our vision? We teach and research in three major disciplinary areas known as the humanities, natural sciences, and social sciences. To help you discover your new academic home, we have developed this video to explain our vision and the disciplines further. What is a liberal arts education and why do we believe in it? Your education in the College of Arts and Sciences draws on the liberal arts, which broadly defines means an education that prepares free people for a place in a civil society by providing instruction in broad perspectives on how humans learn and understand the world around them. There are several key aspects of a liberal arts education. To embrace learning for its own sake. To expose ourselves to a breadth of knowledge. To develop intellectual skills in reading, writing, speaking, and thinking independently. And to see ourselves as part of the world and think about our place in it. To understand these goals for a liberal arts education is to understand why we have made the choices we have made for your education. In the College of Arts and Sciences, we categorize our field of study into disciplinary areas and then break them down into disciplinary fields, which we also call departments or programs, or in other words, the majors that you have chosen or may choose. These broader areas and the specific departments that fall under them are listed on this slide. In the humanities, we have English, foreign languages, and literature, history, and philosophy. In the natural sciences, we have biology, chemistry, and biochemistry, mathematics, and medical laboratory science. In the social sciences, we offer crime and justice studies, economics, political science, psychology, sociology and anthropology, and women's and gender studies. Our three disciplinary areas have both similarities among them and differences between them. It's important to know that these disciplines often overlap and are used in interdisciplinary approaches so that one course may touch on several of the disciplines. It's also important to know that at universities and colleges, teaching is not all that goes on. Faculty do research as well. The knowledge that is imparted to you is created by our faculty at UMass Dartmouth and by faculty at all other higher learning institutions through their research. Your professors are researchers as well as teachers, and this combination helps to create new knowledge for you and adds new knowledge to the faculty member's field of study. In effect, this is your professor's job. What are the similarities among the disciplinary areas? All areas of research seek truth about the physical world, which includes human beings. All ask questions about the world or universe. What? Why? How? All try to collect evidence as the basis of their research in order to answer their questions by developing and testing hypotheses, describing the results of their research, and creating meaning or theory from their results. All add to pre-existing knowledge in their field through their research and by collaborating with other researchers in their field. The same topic can be explored by researchers in different disciplinary areas. What are the differences between disciplinary areas? Although they may research the same topics, perspectives change across disciplines because each area defines useful evidence differently and has different methods for collecting and evaluating evidence. Each asks questions based on the type of evidence it might collect to answer those research questions. Each places the evidence into a different framework for analysis of the evidence. So types of evidence, methods of collection, and analysis of evidence, and the ways researchers interpret the evidence changes across disciplinary areas. We will see both similarities and differences as we discuss our example topic, murder. As a topic, murder, the concept and the reality, allows us to explore the three disciplinary areas to understand similarities and differences in perspective, research questions, and research methods. So let's explore it further. First, let's look at the humanities. In the humanities, researchers develop questions about the experience of being human and how humans express their own humanity. Evidence consists of what we call artifacts, art, writing, documents, speech, and really any way in which humans record their ideas. Evidence is evaluated through analysis and criticism. This is not negative criticism, but a method of looking critically at the artifact for the purposes of analysis. Facts and truth are not always the same thing in the humanities. 
In our college, the humanities fields might approach the topic of murder in the following ways. In the English department, which focuses on how we use and understand the English language, we might look at murder by attempting to discover the conditions under which one human being could be driven to murder another. An example of how an English researcher might approach murder is to investigate Truman Capote's In Cold Blood, which chronicled and attempted to reconstruct in words the 1959 murders of the Clutter family at the hands of Dick Hickok and Perry Smith. In foreign language and literature, we learn that different languages and cultures perceive aspects of human existence differently and that their languages often reflect those differences. In English, the word murder includes intent, but words that distinguish intentional murder from accidental killing do not necessarily exist in every language or culture. Historians ask questions about the past by looking at documents and other artifacts created in the past in order to determine what happened and how people perceived what happened in that time period. Historians interested in murder could collect and analyze written records by high-level Nazi officials in order to research the historical phenomenon we understand as the Holocaust. In philosophy, researchers investigate the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence. Applying logic and reason, they build on the work of earlier philosophers. A philosopher interested in murder might investigate the history of ethics in state-managed capital punishment. Overall, what we see here is that the humanities faculty focus on human perspectives and individual accounts of murder. We can think about the experience surrounding the murder event or human motivation as just two of the humanities perspectives on murder. Next up, the natural sciences. The natural sciences are also often described as physical sciences. These are disciplinary fields that focus on observable phenomena. Researchers in these fields ask questions about the natural or physical universe. Evidence is collected through experimentation, leading to observed, usually measured results. The process of building knowledge in this realm is called the scientific method, comprising the development and testing of a hypothesis, which is a predication, by designing and running an experiment, collecting data, examining whether the hypothesis is proven, and theorizing how the data fit into existing knowledge. Physical evidence of murder can be of interest to scientists. The field of biology asks questions about life. Biologists research by first developing questions, then designing ways to answer them. A murder investigation might use a type of biological research to collect what we call forensic evidence. In a murder investigation, the time of death is important. The biologists could use a deep knowledge of entomology and the life cycles of different kinds of insects to determine the time of death of a body found in the forest. Chemistry focuses on understanding matter and its properties and composition, as well as how it changes. Chemists experiment and observe results to test hypothesis. A chemist might aid in a murder investigation by using spectroscopy to evaluate blood stain evidence. Mathematics is the study of both concrete and abstract numbers. Mathematical models are developed in many research fields, highlighting the use of mathematics as an applied field although research is also an important aspect. A mathematical model or logarithm may be constructed to predict future locations of crime within a given territory. The Department of Medical Laboratory Science prepares students to work in the field of medical technology. The field focuses on laboratory methods developed to detect and diagnose disease and to monitor health. The practices of this field include clinical chemistry, hematology, blood banking, microbiology, and urinalysis. A scientist in the field might become involved in a murder investigation by testing blood for poisons, drugs, or other toxic substances. They might also be asked to use molecular techniques for detecting a murderer's DNA at the crime scene. So the natural sciences might investigate the facts of individual cases of murder using scientific methods in a laboratory setting or methods of analyzing evidence and data about a murder. Finally, now we will turn to the social sciences. In the social sciences, we ask questions about human society and societies. Researchers develop questions, design methods for answering the questions, such as making observations, administering surveys, or other experimental methods. Social scientists also develop hypotheses, collect data, and examine whether the data supported their hypotheses, and theorize about their results. Evidence collected includes measurements about human activities. Social sciences in our college follow. 
Crime and Justice Studies researchers study crime and justice as sociological phenomena using theoretical frameworks that help explain the effects of crime and justice practices on certain populations. Using the methods of social science research, observation, interviews, polls, and other forms of qualitative and quantitative research, crime and justice scholars might ask questions about how race, gender, and class create unequal distributions of both victims and offenders. They may seek to identify how certain policies and laws lead to disparities in arrest, prosecution, and sentencing rates for specific groups and particular crimes, including murder. Economics researches the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services, often by using mathematical models. Economics is intimately concerned about issues of human survival by taking account of the requirements for life, such as food and work. An economist might investigate the financial impact of death penalty murder cases on the government, for example. Political science provides instruction about political institutions in a local and global setting. The impact of government upon individuals and individuals upon government are core aspects of research investigation. A political scientist might research state or federal institutions involved in the death penalty to determine whether the death penalty is a deterrent to crime. In psychology, we investigate mental functions and the behavior of people. Psychologists may choose the clinical route and treat people with mental health problems, or they may choose to perform research looking into general patterns of neurological or human behavior. Research psychologists may seek general patterns of thought or behavior that explain how humans regard murder. They may study brain function to develop techniques for predicting violent behavior in individuals that might include murder. Sociologists and anthropologists seek answers to questions about social and cultural practices and behaviors among humans. Researchers collect data through field observations, interviews, or examinations of records. In the case of murder, these scholars might investigate the impact of a murder within a particular community. They may explore changes in social and daily behaviors in that community. Women's and Gender Studies focuses on gender as a category of analysis in explaining the experiences of humans in relationship to gender. This field demonstrates the impact of an individual's gender identity on social, political, and economic realities. Scholars use both humanities and social science research methods. In the case of murder, researchers may investigate the role of murder in intimate partner violence, looking at statistics and or experiences collected by gender. To recap, look at this simple graph that shows data collected from public records, including the FBI, about murder rates. It shows that murder rates are higher in states where the death penalty is in place. This graph offers data in a numerical format, but it does not try to tell us what the data means. Social scientists use data to theorize about human behaviors, but they will interpret the data or ask further questions about the data differently, according to their discipline. We will leave it to you to think about how faculty from all three of our disciplinary areas might think about this graph and ask more questions about the meaning of this graph. In conclusion, it's important to remember that murder is only one of thousands of topics of research that we might pursue in the College of Arts and Sciences. It's worth remembering that although humans have already created a vast ocean of knowledge about the world, there is still much left to learn. The humanities, natural sciences, and social sciences all offer unique perspectives while also helping you to develop better communication skills, critical and independent thinking skills, and a much greater understanding and appreciation of the world around you and your place in it. We hope that we have conveyed our excitement about what we teach, and we thank you for watching.